What's good people, I'm Ocean. Welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. Hope you're having a great day wherever you're watching from. Today, I guess you could say this is gonna be a different video. I haven't done something like this before. I'm gonna be walking around my studio and tallying up, tallying up, tally, this is a hard word to say, tallying up. So basically how much I've spent on all my music production gear. I'd say like the studio is, 95% done. I mean, it's never completely finished. I'm always investing in new things, adding just small pieces just to like level up every time. And the other day I was ordering some new equipment and I was just thinking to myself like, damn, I'm really about to spend this much money on just this. Like, this is expensive. And then it got me thinking, I wonder how much I've actually spent on all my equipment in the studio. And it's a question that a lot of you have been asking. So I think it'll be a very, very useful video if you're thinking like, how much should I spend? How much does this cost, that cost? I'm gonna break it down in this video. Just wanna shout out Chucky Beats as well, cause he did a video like this a few months ago. But yeah, this is gonna be like my version, how much I've spent on all my gear. And I don't know how much I've actually spent. If I was to take a guess, I would say between five grand to seven grand in pounds. So that's roughly about 8,000 US dollars. So yeah, at the end of the video, we'll see if I'm close or if I'm right. Let's get to the studio right now. Damn, this place is a complete mess. I'm gonna tidy this up real quickly because it's a madness right now. Ocean Gango Drown. All right, so before we get into how much everything cost, how much I've spent. I just want to say this. I guess you could call this a quick disclaimer. This is not me saying that if you want to start music production, this is all the stuff that you have to go out there and get. You have to go out and invest big money. You need to go spend bare money. That's not it. This is just the equipment that I've bought over the years and where I am today. I'd say it's definitely more of a progression, a step-by-step -step process. I didn't buy all these things at once. It was more like over the years, as I got into it, I got deeper in it. I started investing more and more and this is where we're at today. But if you're beginning, you definitely don't need all this stuff to start making music. You can literally just start with your laptop or your computer. If you go back to like my very first videos, you're gonna see me with the laptop open and literally just making beats with the, the keys on the keyboard. And then eventually getting a MIDI keyboard and then eventually getting some studio monitors and upgrading and all this stuff, but it's definitely a process. So with that being said, let's break down the cost of everything. All right, so let's just start off from here. We've got the acoustic panels all around the room. There's actually six of them up. I built these from scratch. I built these using a YouTube tutorial to try and save money because when I did go online and I went on a website to go buy them, they did do a package. I think there was like a package of eight panels, plus you get the bass traps for the corner of the room. And it was quite expensive. It was like, I wanna say about 800 pounds, which is about a thousand dollars. So I decided, nah, let me just build these myself and save some money. So if I had to calculate six panels and all the materials, to be honest, all the materials together cost me about 250 pounds. Let's put it at that, 250 pounds, which is about $320, I'm gonna guess, to do the six panels. Just above the panels going around the whole entire room, we've got this light strip. This is from Amazon, just a really random one. I literally just picked the first one with the most reviews and that cost me about 20 pounds. No, actually it was 27 pounds, I remember. 27 pounds, $35 I'm guessing. And then over to this section, we have a zoom recorder. This thing can go around recording random sounds and then bring them into your door, chop them up, turn the sounds into whatever you want. Good, really good for sampling, really, really good recorder. I picked this up for about 200 pounds. So that's about, roughly about $300. And then we've also got a bunch of different random percussion stuff. Some shakers, I got this thing in Bali. I don't know what these called, I forget. Recorder, tambourine and a triangle. I picked up all this stuff so I could use it for the self-isolation kit, which is a free, drum kit if you haven't got it already link will be in the description below where you can go ahead and download that i don't exactly remember how much all these things individually cost so i'm just going to round it up let's say i think altogether i spent around 50 to 60 pounds let's just say 60 pounds which is about 80 usd and then after that we've got some mics and the last studio tour i did i just had the rode nt1a 
it's a good mic it's okay this ran me about it came as a package with the pop filter the shock mount that itself was 120 pounds then the stand that it's on was 30 pounds i got this about two days ago this is the aston spirit mic look at that that looks like a masterpiece i actually got this as a full package so it came with the shield the mic and this stand and that ran me about 450 pounds which we'll say is about $600. All right, moving on. We have got the Korg mini log just sitting there because I don't actually have a keyboard stand for it yet. If you've seen any of the videos that I've made recently, you've probably seen me cook up with this. This is an analog synth. It's got a lot of different presets, a lot of different sounds, and then you can turn these knobs to, to customize it on that. Can't lie, I feel like I'm going down into this deep, deep rabbit hole of synth land where I've been researching and learning more about simps. They sound amazing. They cost a lot, a lot of money and I may just have to break the bank and buy a few more because they're amazing. This one, I got second hand off of eBay. It set me back about 320 pounds. We call that $400. But if you was to buy this retail, it's a lot more. It's about 450 pounds when I saw it in the shop. So we'll say that's about $600. I'm starting to teach myself how to play the guitar and start implementing it into Beats. So I wanted to get something that's kind of beginner friendly, not too expensive, not too fancy. I think this one ran me about, it cost me 180 pounds, so we call that 250 in dollars. And then we got a digital piano, the Yamaha P45. I use this to just practice the keys, as you can see, like I got the books and that, just some notes. And this cost me 500 pounds. I think I bought this at 500 pounds, which came with like the stand, the seat then we've got the main area this is the desk this is the setup all right so first things first let's start with the the power of everything the macbook pro i use a macbook pro 2015 a lot of people have been asking me it's an early 2015 one the specs i don't remember but i think it might be like the high the high version and at the time it ran me about 1,500 pounds. No, 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 no. It was more than that. It was two grand. Two grand. So let's say that's about $3,000. It's a good laptop. It's been solid for a good five years now. As soon as the new MacBook Pro comes out, you know, the one that's like 14 inches, I'm gonna grab that because I need an upgrade ASAP. It's a bit slow right now. Studio monitors that I'm using, they are the Adam Audio A7Xs. To buy each one individually, I think one costs you about 450 pounds. So that's about $600 each. So for the pair, $1,200 or 900 pounds, quick maths. The audio interface I'm using is an Apollo Twin Mark II. Definitely one of the best purchases I've made for the studio. And one of the more pricier things in here, this one ran me 660 pounds. And when I was at checkout, buying this, I was thinking to myself like, do I really need this? This is so much money just for an audio interface. At the time, I didn't really understand the importance of having a good audio interface or why this was even that good. Definitely one of the smart choices I've made though. It's sick, I love it. And it's an investment for the future because I probably have this thing for at least like the next five to 10 years. The MIDI keyboard I'm using, I think it's called Complete Control S49 by Native Instruments. This costs 500 pounds, that's about $700. The screen, this is a curved one by Philips. I don't know what the model name is called. I just saw this on Amazon. Thought it looked cool and I grabbed it. This cost me about 150 pounds. And then to be able to use the MacBook Pro as like a desktop, have it in the closed mode and control. I got the, I think it's called a Magic Keyboard and the touchpad. I have to use the touchpad when I'm making beats. I cannot use the mouse. I'm just too used to working from the laptop. So I got the touchpad instead. And I got these both secondhand. This one ran me about, hmm, I don't remember. Let's just call this 50 and we call this 50 as well. So 100 for the two. So that's everything that's out in the studio, but I have got some extra equipment like in this drawer right here. We've got some headphones, the Sennheiser HD Pro, HD 280 Pro. I got two of them because the first one broke. This one, when I, at the time of buying, cost me 150 pounds. And then this one cost me 90. They're both the same headphone. This one's just like the updated version and this one's the older model. And this one is the old audio interface by Focusrite. I think it's called the 2i2. 
and I got this second hand at the time and that cost me 50 quid. And then some more equipment when I'm traveling, I like to just take this thing with me. This is the Akai MPK Mini. This now, I think the last time I checked it was about 80 pounds, which is probably about $120. Oh, and I realized I missed out a few things as well. Missed out the table. This is a desk from Ikea. Some Alexa drawers with a countertop on top. That cost me roughly 130 pounds altogether, I think. And then we've also missed out the speaker stands for the monitors. Those cost me 40 quid for the package, I think. Again, just something really random. I searched on Amazon, picked out the one with the most reviews. And also this chair that I'm sitting in. This is a really comfy office desk chair. This one cost me 250 pounds. All right, so let's add up everything. So as I was going around naming the prices of all the gear, I was trying to keep track of it on my calculator, but I definitely screwed it up a bit. So give or take just a little bit, the total that I've got is £6,880, which is about £8,500 USD, I'm guessing. So wait, I actually realised I made a big mistake with the calculations. I didn't calculate it properly. So as I'm going through and editing, I've got the numbers now. I've added it all up. The real total is £7,237, which is also £9,000 and 24 US dollars. So at the beginning of the video, I guessed it'd be between five and seven K, so I wasn't that far off. It's quite a lot of money spent on gear, but I guess that depends on what perspective you have, because music production could definitely get way more expensive than, than that. And when you think about it, I haven't included how much money I've spent on plugins as well, because that right there, would definitely bring this total up to way over 10K. Luckily though, some of the equipment I haven't bought myself, some were sent out to me, like the studio monitors from Adam Audio, shout out to Adam Audio, and the MIDI keyboard for Native Instruments. That's the perks of being a YouTube producer for sure. So let's say I just started music production and I wanna get into it. What equipment should I invest in first? This right here, this power right here that I put together is what I'd pick up. First of all, you're going to need a laptop or a computer. If you're going to be using Logic Pro X, then you have to use a Mac because that door is only available for Mac. If you can't get that, then I'd recommend looking into building your own computer, your own PC, so at least you can change things around and make it more powerful. You're going to need some sort of MIDI keyboard. A good one to get is this because you can literally just throw this in your bag and you're good to go. It's really light as well. It's really small and I know some people are not a big fan of the small MIDI keyboards. Then if you want something a bit bigger, look into getting like the 49 key, the 61 key. I guess that's the bare minimum. If you want to go a bit further, you're going to need an audio interface so you can plug in your studio monitors, so you can plug in external equipment, so you can get better audio quality from your computer. So a good one to get, Focusrite 2i2. Yeah, it's a good audio interface. If you can't get studio monitors, then get some mixing headphones, some proper ones, so you can actually hear the frequencies and everything and get more of an accurate mix on your beats. And again, take what I'm saying with a pinch of salt because you can make music with not that much equipment, with equipment that's not that fancy. Hits have been made with literally just the, the Apple headphones. So, but yeah, this is just a guideline. I hope that you find this useful. I hope it helps you understand the costs of music production, of music gear and all that good stuff. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really, really, really helps the video. That's about it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.